G'day and welcome to another big edition of the RDFNL Footy Show. Thanks to our friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. My name is Ginger. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. Thanks for jumping on board. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, the fi- first week of the finals is done and dusted. Do you think we saw any surprises over the weekend? Maybe possibly a little bit one with Wallen Macedon, but my probably one surprise was there's no close matches. Yeah. They all ended up being blowouts, and we've seen a lot of close matches between these top, especially the top five, and at times with Rumsey, the top six, they've been pretty close with Diggers Rest the last couple of times, but they ended up all being blowouts, and that was probably the one big surprise of the weekend. Probably the, at the end of the day, we probably would have factored in one game was could have gone uh, a bit a bit lopsided, but as you said, all, all three of them uh, went that way. Let's talk about the first game, and you had the uh, privilege of getting out there. It was a qualifying final out at Romsey Park. How good was the weather? It was beautiful. The sun was out. I'm like, last week they had snow out there. Yep. This week we had the sun, so it was quite a beautiful day. I think I didn't even put my jacket on all day. It was that nice out there and nice to enjoy, enjoy a sunny <laughs> weekend at this time of the year. Great introduction to finals as well. Mother Nature certainly put on a great show. And Mother Nature did and looked after us. And look, it was probably the footy quite wasn't what we were hoping in the seniors. Um, I think after halftime it became a one-sided match, but we had a little bit of an upset earlier in the day with Rupert's Wood knocking off Wallen in the 19s. Yeah, that was quite a surprise. Uh, Rupert's Wood, I think, kicked the opening four goals of the game and uh, that was basically all she wrote so it was a that was pretty intriguing itself. As expected, uh, Diggers Rest did a camp for, uh, for Riddle in the reserves. Diggers Rest are a, a, a real powerful side and I think they'll, uh, they'll certainly take some beating. But it was Riddle who returned the favour on the score sheet because they ended up winning the seniors. They did and it was a pretty good first half between both Riddle and Rupert's Wood. At times, both sides were a little bit undisciplined and we saw that in the third quarter as well. And Riddle kicked the first couple of goals and they were in front all day and that first half they couldn't really get any further than the two three goals in front there was a um, free kick just before the siren on half time and then a 50 meter penalty after the siren um, to Rupert's Wood and they kicked a goal to bring it, the margin back to under 10 points heading into half time you thought yep really good match Rupert's Wood's got the momentum but then after that Diggers, um, not Diggers Rest Riddle sort of took over it took a while to get on the scoreboard in that third quarter Tempest flared a bit um, yeah. I think there's no love lost between these two sides both on the field and off the field they've really built a really big rivalry in recent years Years, and it was the Bombers who sort of um, dominated and they kept the Sharks goalless in that third quarter and it wasn't until late in the game the Sharks were able to kick a couple got consolation goals but in the end it was a quite convincing win to the Bombers. Who were some of the standouts for you on the day just from your general observations? Look, Scotty Welsh um, starred star down there for the Bombers. I think the two Salberg boys were really good. You had Paul and Michael. Um, Michael kicked three goals. Dylan Tarkson also kicked three so you had a few different targets up forward and they had a lot of different options. For the Sharks you had some of your main guys getting a lot of the ball but in the end they were struggled up forward to um, your key targets to kick plenty of goals. Tom Podolczak, um played on a wing. You did have Brett Chambers down forward. He um, did he returned from injury but did leave the field in the third quarter limping. He did play the last quarter but played most of that down deep forward. So they struggled a little bit there to get the targets but in the end it was a quite convincing win to the Bombers. Certainly a good, uh, good sign there for the Bombers. They were a, a very uh, quality opposition that extends their winning streak to 14. Now let's talk uh, Sunday afternoon football and uh, we'll, we'll talk up Diggers Rest and Romsey um, Diggers Rest come out of the box and uh, and put the game away pretty early, leading by over 50 points at quarter time. Very similar situation to 12 months ago when yep. they put Sunbury to saw really early on and took the c- control of the game in an elimination final. So they kicked nine goals in that first quarter and then it was the second quarter. They still outscored um, the Redbacks there when they were kicking against the wind. So that was probably the key. They played really good in that first, were able to back it up in the second. And having Jamie Lobb said the previous week, Mountain Centrals was their best four quarter performance. He said this was now their best <laughs> four quarter performance. So they seem to be building at the right time. They've had injuries there and th- all throughout the season, unavailability but they're still not at full strength but they're getting better and better and that's what they were sort of aiming for at the start of the season. The pressure that they put on the red backs uh, right through the middle even, even across half back line uh, I love the way that the, uh, the bar has actually put quite a few players around the, uh, the middle of the ground so their pressure inside the forward 50 caused the red backs defence uh, to, to cause errors and I guess um, you know, no Aiden Tazari in the back line as well there for the red backs, pretty tough for them but I don't see that he would have made that real difference because the forward pressure there from the boroughs was absolutely outstanding. It was and one of the ones who really stood up there was Matthew Metcraft. I, mm. I know I actually spoke to his father a couple of weeks ago and we talked about him playing finals on Clark Oval, having grown up playing at the Sunbury Lions and played many games at Clark Oval. He starred and was played his best game for the boroughs back on his old home ter- ground which he's starred on a lot <laughs> of times before he had Cam McCabe um, kick another bag of goals up there forward as well so it was a really good effort from the boroughs and they just their experience showed through and it's, we've sort of seen the last two years that 
Romsey's probably has been the sixth best team, but they haven't been able to match up with the top five come the finals. Yeah, I think it's hard for them that uh, the second final in a row that they've played at Clark Oval and that is a disappointing first quarter because the same thing happened against Riddle uh, last year. I think it was 11 goals to one at half time. In this case here, it was, uh, it was not too dissimilar. I think it was 12 goals to, to two or something to that effect. So... Yeah, tough for the Redbacks, but hopefully they can uh, they can bounce back and uh, and get back into it next year. Uh, I always had the pr- privilege of getting out and watching Macedon and Wallen on paper. This was going to be an absolute cracker, go right down to the wire. But from the opening bounce, Macedon, they just look switched on. It was just unbelievable, that run and drive through the centre. Dan Markworth was sharp. You had Chris Kilmartin, who was back uh, from injury for the first time in a couple of months. Matt Knox was unstoppable. Jason Cook had a bit of a cameo up forward. They were all just clicking. It was... Um, it was just one of those days where if it had been, if Wallen had played Macedon any other day, it probably would have been more of an even contest. But you just knew from the opening bounce, Macedon were really switched on. Well, even talking to, um, talking to Ben Tankard, he said in that first quarter, they didn't have a lot of the ball. They just made the most of the opportunities mm. when they had it. So they went forward. Obviously, you mentioned Matt Knox. He kicked eight and was best on ground in the end. So they had that key target up forward. You put Jason Cook up there, it gives you an, another alternative target up there. So they didn't start the best, but they made the most on the scoreboard. And second quarter, I think they were a little bit disappointed at and um, got back into the game, I think it was eight points at half time. But after that, the focus for the Cats was win- winning the stoppages. Once they started to win the stoppages, they were able to get the ball forward and they were already making their most of the opportunities going forward. So it just um, sort of opened the game up. And in the end, the margin blew out in that last quarter, um, in the last sort of 10 to 15 minutes once the game was over. I think it was tough for the Pies too. They just didn't really have that strong forward structure like you, you highlighted with Rupert's would on the, uh, the same ground sort of 24 hours earlier. Sam Rectepi played a little bit further up the ground. Um, but they just sort of lack that venom. And it's, I know they put Jesse Davies a little bit forward later on in the game, but it was sort of to, to no avail. When you, I, I still think when you've got the, you've got Knox and Kilmartin back in the side, they formed the nucleus of the forward line last year. Jason Cook played a played a minor role in the day, but at the end of the day, you know, you've got those two big guns and they're marking everything that's going their way. They're going to be really hard to stop. It is, and it was um, the Cats' best performance from the year. They've mm, probably they've definitely. been a little bit more up and down than we probably predicted. They were building for the second half of the season, but they've had a lot of injuries, so they've started to get most of those players back. They're still missing a couple. Aaron Johnston, who has been a yep. goal kicker this year, is one, and they're still missing Errol McConnell. Both will have to go under fitness tests this week, so you might have both of them return. But other than that, they're looking pretty good, and it was sort of their stars that stood out. But then they had more and even spread, and that's what the Cats have sort of found when they've played really well. They've got that even spread across the board. When they're not necessarily playing, you'll have those stars stand out, but then you're not having those other players step up to help them. What do you make of that performance from Wallen? Like, what does it do for them going forward? Look, they've played finals this year, so that's a, they've one up on last year. Whether or not it's a little bit of finals experience, yeah. and Ben Tankard said he thought that played. Um, a role in it. He said their fitness probably isn't up to where they want it to be, but they've got that finals experience from not just last year, the last few years, and we're able to build on that. And they're growing forward. They're, we've seen massive developments from Warren. Um, until recently, they were a top two side. So yeah. just a, a result here or there, they would have been top two, possibly different story, playing different um, sides in the, in the final round. But we're seeing probably the finish probably a little bit disappointing. They have lost to Rupert's Wood and Macedon. So whether that's showing the gap between them and those top sides, but they have made massive inroads and it's another possibility positive sign for the club going forward. Exactly. They just happened to catch Macedon on their day and then the previous week against Rupert's Wood they just had one bad quarter of kicking so I think they're on the mark and I, you know, hopefully the club, the, this playing group can stick together and whether they add you know, maybe one or two but I think with that development as a group they've still got the potential to make top two um, but it probably says just how even this competition is. It is and they've already signed on Daniel Nolan for next year so they've got, they've got a good base, they're building and building and we've seen these other sides that are still remaining in the competition, they've done that. Now Wallen's sort of doing that and I expect them to still be up there again next year. Certainly shaping up uh, to be a very intriguing uh, round of finals, which will second round of finals which we'll talk about later on the week. Thanks to our friends at the On Time Delivery Solutions team and thanks Tara jumping on board. We'll catch up with you later on the week. Thanks for having me.